Hi and welcome to another in this series, Men Talk. In this short video, I'm going to be exploring the impact of social media on mental health. Now, in this bits and bytes digital era where a three-year-old apparently can hack into NASA, um, social media has become a huge part of our lives. No doubt at all. It influences how we uh, connect, how we communicate, and also how we affect other people's uh, opinions. Not necessarily helpfully. And in some cases, they can be absolutely devastating to other people's lives. Humans are naturally social species. They depend on the companionship of others to thrive in life. And so while being socially linked with others, this helps alleviate stress, the worry, the melancholy, and it protects them. Uh, and a lack of social connection can pose major threats to one's mental health. I mean, without social media, we would cease to exist, surely. Over the last 10 years, the rapid emergence of social networking sites like Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, among others, has led to some significant changes in how people connect and communicate. And there's over three and a half billion people currently using um, Facebook at the moment. It's the largest social networking website on the planet, with TikTok and YouTube at around two and a half billion. Big numbers. Uh, and the average screen time for an adolescent, it being about six and a half hours a day, and in adults, two and a half hours a day. Um, I, there's no wonder there's so many men issues with mental health. In fact, I know adults that use the social media for far more than two and a half hours a day. But anyway, I admit social media has its benefits. It also has significant downsides. One major concern is the issue of comparison. Um, social media often showcases idealised versions of life where there be a con there can be a constant need to compare yourself with false icons on that little seven inch screen in front of you. Um, and this is, can lead to um, engaging in, in healthy comparisons and this can create feelings of inadequacy and dissatisfaction with the, the way that your own life's going. And if you can't achieve this, then some people become depressed and they also do far worse. This is especially prevalent amongst young people. Exposure to unrealistic beauty standards can lead to body image issues and even do eating disorders. And another significant negative aspect is cyberbullying. The anonymity of social media can encourage individuals to engage in harassment and negative behaviour. The BBC recently published some harsh facts uh, and they said apparently 4,500 adolescents committed suicide every year because of cyberbullying. That's every year in the UK. Uh, and this kind of matches the, the figure of around about four and a half thousand men who commit suicide every year due to mental health issues. So this kind of got me onto wondering how many of these died because of social media influences. Victims of cyberbullying often experience severe emotional distress, anxiety and depression. And the impact can be long lasting and deeply damaging. And social media can also lead to addiction um, due to its overuse. The constant need for likes and validation can create a cycle of dependency that negatively affects the mental health of an individual. Late night scrolling, you know, under the covers can disrupt sleep patterns. It affects productivity due to tight increased tiredness. It increases the feelings of anxiety and depression. So what can we do? Well, it's crucial that we find a balance in our social media use um, by fostering supportive online environments and being mindful of our consumption we can harness the positive aspects while mitigating the negatives. And best of all is just don't surf the net at all. But we all know that isn't gonna happen, don't we? So if we understand mental health is represented as a state of well-being in which individuals recognize their potential, they can successfully navigate daily challenges, perform effectively at work and in relationships, and make a substantial difference in the lives of others, how much is social media affecting us in that regard? Well, there is currently a worldwide debate about the benefits and drawbacks of social media on mental health. Um, social media use and mental health may be related, uh, and the displaced behaviour theory could assist in clarifying why. Now, the displaced behaviour hypothesis is a psychological theory that suggests people have limited self-control when confronted with um, challenging or stressful situations, and they may engage in behaviours that bring instant gratification, but are not in accordance with their own long-term objectives. Well, that's the Institute of Psychology talking, not me personally. But basically it means that while using social media, you're going to be doing things that are great instantaneously, but in the long term, not beneficial. Uh, and so new, new, numerous studies on social media's effects have been conducted, and it's been proposed that 
Prolonged use of the social media sites like Facebook may be linked to negative symptoms of depression, anxiety and stress. Adolescents are drawn to social networking because they allow them, it allows them to publish pictures and images and photographs and videos on their individual platforms. It also allows them to establish friends, discuss ideas, discover new interests and try out new kinds of service expression. And users of these platforms can freely like and comment on posts as well as share them without any restrictions. However, adolescents frequently engage in trolling for, amu for amusement without recognising the potentially harmful effects. Um, trolling is, is a new word in the dictionary. It's on these platforms, it focuses on body shaming, um, individual abilities, language, lifestyle. And the effects from this can result in um, anxiety, depression, symptoms of stress, feeling isolation and suicidal thoughts. This is becoming a repetitive theme. Okay, that's the negative. So let's look at the positive aspects of social media. Without a shadow of a doubt, some of the most significant benefits are education and community building. I'm not interested in the Chinese sponsored 60 second highlight video thing you can click onto and how many somebody can put a cow over the moon or how you can look stupid on a skateboard drunk. I'm talking about social media platforms that allow individuals to learn to do stuff that they wouldn't normally be able to do. I personally use it all the time for tutorials and videos like this one. And when I make them, I, I, it makes me feel empowered. You know, I have to say that it's been an absolute eye opener to a wider world that I wouldn't normally have access to, especially when I get really positive reactions in the comments afterwards. It also connects others who share similar experiences, especially regarding mental health challenges, such as this series of videos. And this can create a, a supportive network where people understand um, that they can be part of something bigger. Um, support networks can be incredibly empowering. They provide a sense of belonging, uh, they help combat feelings of isolation, and, and many mental health organisations use social media to raise awareness, um, share resources and educate people and reduce stigma. Through social media, we can access a wealth of information about mental health. Uh, it fosters an understanding and reducing the stigma, especially when it comes to men talking to other men about men's stuff. Another pos uh, positive aspect is the opportunity for creative expression. Many people use social media as an outlet to share their art, their writing, their personal stories. And this form of expression can be therapeutic. It can help individuals process their own emotions. And in the case of organisations such as um, Healing Hubs or um, Silent Storms, which is a group I belong to, it can save lives by getting people to talk in a safe, uh, trusted environment away from the influences that harm them. When people share their experiences, they're often received um, invaluable support and validation. It connects them with people who have so many, uh, so much else in common with them. Uh, and the mental health implications of allowing social media to control our lives can be a double-edged sword. Could we do without it? Well, I can remember a time less than 25 years ago when we didn't have it, and we did rather well, thank you very much. But could we, um, you know, could we live without it now? Hmm, I'm not so sure. Please remember, despite all of this, mental health is crucial. Your personal mental health is vital and you are not alone in your experiences. So if you or someone you know is struggling with mental health, it could be simply a change in mood or an unusual stress in their lives. Why not just reach out to them and say, hi, you know, how are you doing? Do you want to talk about it? Um, together though, we can create a healthier relationship with social media uh, and we can use it to help us and benefit us in all aspects of life. Please subscribe, um, leave your comments below, and I thank you for joining us in this discussion. Please take care of yourself and remember the best thing you can do if you have a problem is to talk.